Coming up next on Eyewitness News, Gloria roared by the Maryland coast, gusting winds, torrential rains, flooding and heavy damage on the eastern shore. We will bring you live team coverage, including an exclusive interview with Baltimore Mayor William Donald Schaefer. Governor Hughes declares a state of emergency on the eastern shore. We'll have details from Pikesville. Ocean City's boardwalk suffering heavy damage. The beach worse. Don Scott and Craig Jehelka reporting live. And evacuation centers around the state took in many residents who fled the low ground and high waters. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Richard Chair. Hello, I'm Beverly Burke. And I'm Marty Bass. Would you believe it? It's going to be a great weekend. Mm. Starting in about three hours, you'll see sunshine. We'll have the Accu Weather Forecast talk about Gloria and have all the day's news next right here on Channel 13's Eyewitness News at noon. Hurricane Gloria blew by the coast of Maryland this morning with a vengeance. You're looking in right now at shots of Ocean City where the boardwalk has suffered damage and streets were piled high with debris. In Anne Arundel County, streets flooded out as expected, as they did all over the area. Around Maryland, some 5,300 homes are still without power, according to Baltimore Gas and Electric. The high water also shut down the Jones Falls Expressway. More on street closings in just a moment. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Richard Scher. I'm Beverly Burke. And topping our coverage of Hurricane Gloria's assault on Maryland and the East Coast is the governor's announcement made a short time ago declaring a state of emergency on the eastern shore. Ann Kellen is standing by live now and has this report from State Police Headquarters in Pikesville. And Thank you, Richard. The governor will be flying to Ocean City later today. Just a short while ago, he did have a news conference and did declare a state of emergency, but he said, overall, Marylanders were very lucky in this storm. I'm more than happy to inform you that the worst of the Hurricane Gloria appears to be moving away from Maryland. The situation is well under control statewide. And as you probably know, the, the eastern shore, the Delmarva Peninsula, are the areas that have been hit hardest by, uh, along the coast by this storm. I have signed a proclamation declaring the state of emergency, and the effect of this is to authorize all state agencies to uh, render whatever assistance uh, uh, is needed uh, for the citizens of the state in this uh, area of problems. Now we've just received word that people in Ocean City, if they have proof that they do own property there, are now being allowed, allowed back into Ocean City. Uh, governor says after all the counties assess the amount of damages, the state may be applying for federal disaster aid. 130 National Guardsmen are now on the eastern shore. Ocean Boulevard in Ocean City is still said to be flooded. Three fires, they said, broke out, but there were no major injuries at all. The town of Crisfield is said to be flooded. About 5,000 people overall were housed in shelters overnight, but probably slowly they will be allowed to be returning home throughout today. Back to you, Richard and Beverly. All right, thanks a lot. And Kellen, live from Pikesville, saying that the governor will be flying to Ocean City in a little while to survey damage there. And we'll have more on Gloria and from Pikesville a little bit later in this newscast. Beth? Now on to Marty Bass for what Gloria did, when, and what's the latest on her status, Marty? All right, what Gloria did wasn't as bad as she could have been. I mean, if you consider that there's no major league casualties, we just heard a little under 6,000 people without power. If you consider how mammoth this storm was and how close it was to us, we really skated by it. We heard from County Executive Hutchinson this morning. The mayor's going to be here in a second. Talk to County Executive Lighthizer. All things considered, in the Baltimore metropolitan area and surrounding counties, we got off very lightly. Now, what's she doing now? She's on way on past Atlantic City. She's moving toward Long Island now. Winds are steadily decreasing. And as far as the Baltimore metropolitan area goes, this storm is all but history. It's all over but the shout. And as a matter of fact, George Bauman spoke to me in the newsroom a couple of minutes ago driving up from Kent Island. He saw sunshine down to the south. And you will see sunshine in your area, I guarantee you, about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Back to you, Bev. Okay, thank you very much, Marty. Well, as predicted, Gloria traveled up the coast as much as it was predicted, slamming into Buxton, North Carolina overnight. From there, it hit Norfolk, Virginia early today with the usual high winds and heavy rains. Ocean City had been evacuated by that time as the rains moved in there, and that was early this morning. Further up the coast, casinos and hotels in Atlantic City emptied out. Then the storm moved in. And finally, the northeast around Long Island and New England now feeling Gloria's wrath. 
Well, with Gloria leaving the Maryland area, the eastern shore can begin shaking off the effects of the hurricane. It was a hard morning for Ocean City, Salisbury, and every other town on the shore. And one of those people who has ridden it out is Don Scott, who's been at the beach since yesterday morning, standing by live now in Salisbury with a look at what happened there. Hello, Don. Hello, and in Salisbury right now, it is still very windy, and it has become pretty cold. It was pretty warm this morning when the storm went through, but it's cold now. We are on Salisbury Boulevard. Behind me, you see some workmen who are trying to put some boards over some windows where the tape did not keep them from cracking or breaking last night here in Salisbury. There was other damage, as you'll see in a minute, but the main damage I saw this morning was in Ocean City, where, as you said before, the boardwalk practically was destroyed overnight in some places. 17th Street is where you're looking at right now, the, probably the worst hit part of the boardwalk. It is all but gone there. Uh, the waves pounded both underneath it and over top of it most of the night long, and some of it just gave way. Some of it actually pushed itself, pu pushed its way from the beach up into a few motels, not doing a lot of damage, but some damage. Now, the water also came over the boardwalk and washed sand and water up on the streets of Ocean City. This, you should be seeing a car soon on 10th Street. The car is buried in not only water, but underneath that water, there's about a foot and a half of sand that that car is buried in and will probably be buried in until they can get in there and clean that out. Lots of cars stranded in water and sand this morning. And uh, what everybody expected the damage, or where everybody, down at the high rises, there, there was no damage whatsoever at the high rises that we could see. Lots of wind blew, and, uh, but nothing came off well-constructed builds, perhaps. There's also some flooding on the bayside, lots of flooding in the low-lying areas. That's the story in Ocean City. It could have been a lot worse, as Marty said, but it wasn't all that bad. Now, in Salisbury, nobody knew what to expect, and Craig Jehelka was on the damage beat here. Gloria at the eastern shore knows she's alive and kicking. Even here in Salisbury, 30 miles from the ocean, high winds and fierce rain flooded streets and made traveling on foot almost impossible, even if you're all bundled up in plastic. It's rough out right here, and I wish it wouldn't come this bad because it's rough. I'm trying to make it to the store and head on back home. I was supposed to be working today, but I uh, uh, couldn't get too far. As the minutes ticked by, the storm intensified, Mother Nature unleashing all her mighty fury. In Salisbury right now, the biggest danger is from the wind, gusting from 50 to 70 miles an hour. It's blowing so hard, I can barely stand here and talk to you. The rain hitting my face actually hurts. It feels like pellets. This is great. I love it. It's, uh, it hasn't really destroyed anything, so it's pretty good. But there is damage here, like this trailer flooded by the rains. A shed nearby split apart in the wind, its contents scattered about this storm-bred lake. And all over town, the electric company is working to put back power lines that were knocked down by the fierce winds. And over here, you can see another problem the city has to contend with. Huge trees and yards that were knocked down by glorious fury. It will be several days until the town of Salisbury is back to normal. On the eastern shore, I'm Craig Jehelka, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. And hey, live in Salisbury now, it's still windy, as we said, but not as windy as it was when Craig did the stand-up there where he was blowing people over. It's not doing that anymore. In Ocean City, the one main thing, a big hang-up right now, there's no phone service. They're trying to restore phone service there. And uh, one quick thing here, the sun just came out for a couple of seconds in Salisbury for the first time in a couple of days. Richard? All right, Don, and, and uh, you've had a pretty exciting couple of days down there. You could call it exciting, yes. You could call it frightening from time to time. And you could also call it very tiring and very, very wet. Well, hurry home, because your son Nicholas needs you. All right. Thank it's you. our Don Scott reporting live from Salisbury. Don and Craig continue to cover this story about the wrath of Gloria. And they'll bring you team coverage tonight with complete reports at 6 o'clock. Well, the Eastern Shore obviously felt the worst of Gloria's wrath, but there was plenty to deal with locally from all of the wind and the rain. And... We begin now with Mayor William Donald Schaefer of Baltimore, who was kind enough to join us here at Eyewitness News, and an update on how the city of Baltimore weathered Gloria. I think we did very well. Uh, last night, all the people were, most, many of our people were down the Inner Harbor seeing what was happening down there, down on Pratt Street. Uh, today, we went up to Jones Falls. They closed it off as a precautionary measure only. Went out to uh, Lake Roland to see what was happening out there, and the water is really tumbling over, but no, it's not going to dams in absolutely no danger of breaking. The most important thing, and I think uh, why we did well in the state, preparation. If you're prepared for something like this, you're all right. If mm -hmm. you're not, and the people resist when they tell you to move, move. Mm -hmm. When they say, stay, stay, come back, do what they tell you, because they, they, that saved a lot of lives down in Biloxi. They were able to move 100,000 people 
in a very short time. Here, I think we did well. One last word. Our people are superb. Our people just get out. I, whenever I went today, there was a trouble spot or an alleged trouble spot. There they were. They were, they were working. This doesn't have to be the last word. We can't no. ask you a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, well, one question about just some of the inner city shelters. Uh, I, I, the important thing was getting people out of the weather. And how did the, the shelters Had fare? no problem with that. Uh, we didn't open any, uh, any shelters for this because mm -hmm. the storm in our side wasn't that, of that magnitude. We have a shelter always ready to open up immediately, but we didn't have to do that, I'm glad to say. One quick question uh, on another subject. The fundraisers last night at the Omni, don't smile, because, you know, you, <laughs> I just had to ask you, the Omni and at the convention center, they raised almost a million dollars for the still unannounced candidate for governor. What, when is this going to actually become a fact uh, so that uh, we can get on let with me, this? Let me answer your question real quickly. Today is a perfect example that I just don't stop now and start campaigning and running around and uh, take off from my, my duties. Today, mayor, and tomorrow, mayor, legislative session is 12 months away. Yeah, but Everybody when you talk about campaigning, you are then uh, looking forward to campaigning. I don't at some know, point. because you're a nice man. You're not going to get me to answer any questions either. The answer is uh, we raised some money yesterday and last night, and it was a, incidentally a great affair, and the people were there from all over the state. But the most important thing is that uh, we've still got a lot of work to do. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mayor Wayne Donald Mayor. Schaefer. For Anne Arundel County, uh, Gloria started causing problems at around midnight, and uh, Don Williams reports 3,000 residents were evacuated there. And uh, he's at Chesapeake High School and putting a report together, which he will bring you a little bit later on Eyewitness News tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. In Baltimore County, some of the worst damage took place in the Overly area. Alex Dimitrik has that story. Even up high and away from water, the hurricane packed a punch. On Valer Road in the Overly area, this bingo hall caved in shortly before 9 this morning. Well, I was coming around the corner about a quarter of nine. I heard this big crash, and I thought it was a truck accident. And I saw the glass all blown out and things coming through the uh, windows. And then I looked in the building and saw that the roof had fallen in, and it was pretty bad. Out back, what walls were left standing showed signs of buckling, and businesses adjoining the bingo hall were closed down by the city. The danger is the roof here at 6639 is totally collapsed, and it's causing problems for uh, nuisance offs and the building next door. And right now we're deciding uh, how we're going to uh, demolish this building, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, make the area safe. Because where it stands right now, the building could collapse at any time. Major damage like this takes a lot of people to set right. But all over Baltimore today, there are people fighting their own war against Gloria. A short distance away in the Fullerton area of Baltimore County, a retaining wall gave way. Uh, I guess the pressure of the water and the clay behind the uh, wall pushed it straight out. And uh, steadily getting worse as the rain goes on and the day goes on. Mud and water running out of the hillside found its way to the lowest point, the Kreiner family basement. For a lot of people today, the chore now is wringing out what Gloria has left behind and hoping the rest runs off safely somewhere else. In Overly, Alex Dimitri, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. And now for the very latest on how Gloria is affecting area roads. Here again is Paul Wagner, who has been certainly doing a yeoman's job at Metro Traffic Control throughout the morning and afternoon. Hello, Paul. Thank you, Richard, and hello to you. Uh, right now, things have been uh, returned to normal now on the Jones Falls Expressway and also Falls Road. Of course, Jones Falls was closed northbound almost uh, most of the morning, and uh, so was Falls Road in many, many areas. However, all that has now been reopened. If you have to travel in that vicinity, that's the good news. The bad news is right here where you see the arrow on the map, Reisterstown Road, an overturned 18-wheeler on the outbound side at Craddock Lane, opposite McDonough, which is outside the Beltway. It's going to take five hours to clear this uh, problem now. The uh, tractor trailer came within two inches of striking house there and the wind restrictions have been lifted now from the bay bridge and also the key bridge so tractor trailers that are empty may cross at this time richard okay paul thanks again for all of your help and the complete look at gloria that's up next with marty bass we'll, we'll, we'll look at gloria but really we're going to talk about the weekend the sun is now shining on television hill and <laughs> it is going to be a great win weekend we'll, we'll reminisce and look at the future here shortly you oh, stay with us all right marty's accurate weather forecast ahead on channel 13's eyewitness news <laughs> We have, uh, oh, howl. Goodness, it was something else. Oh, it was, a, it was rough, and i go see if my house is still there. We have a word in from New Yankee Stadium. Tonight's game with the uh, Orioles and the Yankees has been postponed because of bad weather up there, and they will play a doubleheader Sunday beginning at 1 p.m. Billy you know. Martin will be out there coaching. <laughs> 
Can you get a cast wet? Huh, I don't know. Let's talk about this for a second. You were talking about howling. You mentioned your house. Ooh. So, you know, at the top of the show, I, I, I didn't mean if I give anybody the impression that, uh, like, well, hey, this was no big deal and it moved off. This was a major, major storm. And if you consider just how big it was, you know, Ted Cobble, Peter Jennings, Dr. Neil Frank, this is the biggest storm in Atlantic history. It really could have done some incredible unfathomable damage to the mm -hmm. coast. I mean, they, they took it on the chin at Ocean City, took it on the chin down on the eastern shore, but considering what it could have been, it could have been a whole lot worse. As far as our area goes, uh, the only real problem we experienced was a, a, an abnormally high tide this morning. High tide uh, hit Annapolis Harbor about 5 o'clock, Fort McHenry about 6.45, Middle River, a little bit after that. But the tide came up, and then it went out very quickly to an almost abnormally low state, and that's because the winds swirl around a hurricane. It's not like you get a frontal passage and it blows to the northwest for five or six days. The wind will change directions almost three or four times during the passage of a hurricane. So once the tides came in, the winds at that point had shifted to the northwest and literally moved all the water back down the bay. Now there could be some debris and some cleanup after high tide this evening at 7.03, but around the Baltimore metropolitan area uh, and Anne Arundel County, it was the tides that were the big problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current conditions. The sun is shining on television hill weather amazes me four hours ago we were sitting here in the in, in the throes of a hurricane now it's sunny 66 on on uh, uh, tv hill 65 in the suburbs i believe this may be live winds from the west at 17 gusting to 25 skies are brightening that is live i believe humidity 87 percent barometer 2944 and it is rising as the low pressure that was gloria now moves away here's your tides sun sets tonight at 703 the all-important high tide there'll be no question debris coming upstream with the water all right let's take a look at the national radar summary do you have a frontal system still sitting out to the west uh, it's in the process of trying to break through what was holy cow wait a minute I just looked at this. There's no way this can be the national radar summary. Just give me sky eye. We'll call an audible from the line. That's no problem at all. That is yesterday. This is today. No glob down here. This is the remnants of Gloria as far as our local radar is concerned. And we can scan Philadelphia and Atlantic City. The storm center itself has moved up toward Long Island. And once again, the clearing line is just down to the south of Baltimore. Bring in the cloud cover map. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Here it is. Very simply put, clear skies building in from the south. As Gloria moves to the northwest, as this frontal system starts to die itself off and actually get pushed off the coast by high pressure building in from the west, you're going to see a dramatic change in the weather. Go ahead, put the map in motion. Take a look at tomorrow's map. I had to cheat to keep the front on the map just because it looked good. High pressure will control our weather from tonight through tomorrow through Sunday. Monday, we'll get a problem as a frontal system will approach, pass through the area, then cool Canadian air coming in behind it will make next week very fall-like. But as far as this weekend goes, and it, this just amazes me. This is going to be a great weekend. And think what it was five hours ago. Weather is awesome. That's why I love doing it. Here's the forecast. Today, it's going to be dynamite. Clearing, and it's going to be dynamite. I love it. High of 74 degrees. Sunshine this afternoon. Tonight, clear and cool. Low of 54 degrees. Tomorrow is going to be a sunny, nice day with a high of 76 and Sunday. A very nice day. High of 80 degrees. Wow. Outstanding. Science is just tougher than Chinese arithmetic. <laughs> what a difference a few hours makes. It I'm telling you. It is amazing. Talk Thank about it. Talk, yeah, <laughs> take it away. Gloria's howl through Baltimore hasn't ground everything to a halt this afternoon. Well, BWI Airport is open and has been on all day. But BWI is suggesting you check with your airline for cancellations on any particular flight. Well, there wasn't much reading, writing, or arithmetic in Maryland today. Gloria's early morning blast shut down most schools across the state. Only schools in westernmost counties, Garrett, Allegheny, Washington, and Frederick, are open today. The University of Baltimore will have classes tonight, and the Baltimore County uh, did close their circuit and district courts for the day. So if you're doing court in Baltimore County later, don't go today. System-wise, there's a very weak one off the coast of Florida, kind of broken up as the system kind of moved through there. A little bit of a warm front to the north of Glory, which may attract it and help to pull it on off to the northeast. Hurricanes do need uh, warm air to continue their energy source and to move on off. So hopefully if it'll follow that, it'll just work its way on into the North Atlantic. And by this time, a couple of days from now, it'll only be a bad memory. High pressure governing things throughout the central area of the Mississippi, Missouri Valley. This is a relatively strong system, and it's got everything, as you can see here, all the way back in Texas cleared out. And there's also another frontal system extending down out of Canada, partially stationary as it comes down into all the lower reaches of the Rockies, into the uh, areas of Wyoming and Utah. 
and things are relatively cool there. They're going to be cooling off considerably uh, more so because there's a mass of cool air we'll see shortly working its way on into the Pacific Northwest. This is all the precipitation we have, and all of that, as you know, is associated with glory, with the exception of a thunder shower building in Florida, a little activity around the extreme southern coast of Texas. Look at the temperatures around the Great Lakes. They're in the 50s. Compare that to the temperatures in the northwest out of Montana down on into Wyoming. Your noontime readings are in the 30s. And as far as the cooler air you can expect for tomorrow morning, these are the highest for this afternoon, readings in the 40s, 50s, and 60s as far down as northern portions of Colorado. These are your lows for tomorrow morning, readings in the teens, in the 20s, and the 30s. These are more like wintertime temperatures rather than early fall, and your highs for tomorrow afternoon, as far as we're concerned, will be getting back up to about the middle 70s, feeling a lot more like normal. Lots of sunshine, high pressure shifting on over into our area. It's going to make it a lot easier to put today's activities behind us. As Dave Durian told us earlier, Marilyn Veal was one of the first reporters that was allowed back into Ocean City. We understand that he is back in Ocean City right now. We're trying to hook up a live report. Do we have Meredith? Yes. Meredith, there you are in Ocean City. I'm not sure that... Meredith, can you hear me? Well, we seem to be having some technical difficulties, which I think would be certainly understandable with the weather conditions that we have had here for the past six or eight or ten hours. So we'll try to get back to Meredith Buell, and we will certainly have a report from him on the 5.30 and 6 o'clock edition of News and 11. Let's sum up here right now. The worst of Hurricane Gloria has passed through Maryland, but not before she did quite a bit of destruction to the eastern shore. Things are slowly returning to normal throughout most of the state. If you are planning to fly today, it is a good idea to call your airline and check to make sure that your flight is still scheduled. This storm has affected some flights to the Northeast, so it's a good idea to give that call. Same thing goes if you're flying a commuter plane out of Maryland. The Maryland JCs have set up a relief fund for those hardest hit by Hurricane Gloria. All donations will be accepted in a central place and then distributed through public agencies to the most heavily damaged areas. If you wish to make a donation, you can send it to Hurricane Emergency Relief Fund, care of the Maryland JCs, P.O. Box 828 602 Johan Drive, Westminster, Maryland 21157. That's the Emergency Relief Fund fund at the address that you see on your screen. And that does it for News 11 at Noon, this special edition. A quick reminder, Dave Durian and Meredith Beale and Frank Bond are on the Eastern Shore covering Hurricane Gloria, the past Hurricane After Gloria. That, yes. We'll Thank see you tonight at 5.30 and 6 o'clock. Good evening, I'm Frank Luber. And I'm Don Williams in for the vacationing Debbie Wright. A daring prison escape in downtown Baltimore tonight has police and correctional officers searching for two potentially dangerous convicts. Both were serving life sentences, one of them for murder. It is in full swing tonight along the Maryland coast as life after the storm returns to normal. Initial estimates put the damage figure at $6 million to Ocean City alone, which had its boardwalk torn apart by the storm. Despite the damage, most residents were thankful. <laughs> I've been on my knees all morning thanking God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you did pretty good. good. You feel good about it, yeah. You did all right. Officials expect it'll take a week or so for the tons of sand to be cleaned out of homes and off the streets. The boardwalk will be rebuilt in time for next summer's tourist season, though. All along the eastern seaboard, repairs from Gloria's marks are underway. In Connecticut, for example, power outages have led to looting of businesses whose burglar alarms are off. Estimates indicate over a million and a half people are still without power tonight. While there were major problems caused by Gloria, New York officials have found a silver lining in her clouds. The storm made a large contribution to the state's depleted water reservoirs. Well, Hurricane Gloria may be indirectly responsible for the death of a baby dwarf sperm whale tonight. The death of Bubba, who was evacuated from Virginia to Baltimore's National Aquarium, was brought on by something common to human infants, but deadly to the whale. Aquarium officials say Bubba died because he couldn't be adapted to the formula he was being fed. We initiated appropriate therapy, but as, as any loving mother knows, there's no real cure for colic. And... Uh, Unfortunately, he, uh, he died from what uh, is referred to as a gassy or a flatulent colic uh, a little before 4 o'clock this morning. But it was a long shot from the very beginning, when the eight-month-old dwarf sperm whale was rescued from the sands of a Virginia Beach shoreline, a victim of Hurricane Gloria. Because whales are mammals, they drink milk, 
when they are young. But aquarium officials say little is known about dwarf sperm whales, so it was difficult to make a perfect match of the formula. That, along with losing his mother and a trip to Baltimore, was just too tough. And even while he was doing pretty well down there at uh, the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, uh, Gloria uh, kind of forced the move upon him uh, that uh, uh, he probably could have done without. If the baby whale had survived, it would have been an historic occasion. No other dwarf sperm whale has ever lived in captivity for more than two months. Aquarium officials say the whale's death has no bearing on how the beluga whales caught recently for exhibition here should fare. In fact...